Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually see some universal constructions of uh, some important uh, modules. So, namely tensor products, symmetric products, uh, exterior products and so on. So, let me actually uh, recall briefly uh, about all these uh, objects. Okay, I am going to actually kind of uh, give a very quick, uh, uh, quick introduction to all these uh, universal objects. So, mostly uh, these things must be covered in the first course of uh, algebra. But anyway, let us see because uh, these constructions uh, give us many important examples. So, we need to be very comfortable with them. So, let us uh, start with uh, uh, the construction of tensor algebra. So, which is in, in some sense uh, very important uh, for our, all other objects. So, let us start with the vector space. Let us uh, take uh, V being, so we can just assume to be finite dimensional vector space, there is no issue. So, let us take uh, V be a finite dimensional vector space. Let us work over complex numbers as always. So, then uh, we can also fix a basis for this uh, V. So, let us take the basis to be V1, etcetera, Vn. So, where n is the dimension of the space. So, now uh, we have already seen actually the construction of uh, tensor products. Okay. So, given uh, any k uh, which is non-negative integer, one can actually take this uh, kth tensor product. So, that is V tensor, tensor V k times. So, basically uh, this is the kth uh, tensors. Uh, so, we have very natural basis uh, for this uh, tensor product. Okay. So, once we fix the basis uh, V1 etcetera Vn of capital V, uh, then it is not that hard to see. Uh, we have this uh, standard basis Vi1 tensor etcetera Vik, where I1 etcetera i k that actually comes from this uh, 1 to n. So, where i 1 etcetera i k it just comes from this 1 to n. So, this will form a basis for this uh, t power k v. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, just a general uh, fact. So, now once we have this uh, k tensors, okay, th these are called k tensors. So, now uh, given uh, two of these uh, k tensor and k dash tensor, we have a natural bilinear map from uh, t k of v cross t k of dash v to t k plus k dash v. Okay. So, let us define that. So, we have t k v cross let us say t k dash v. 2 we have t k plus k dash of v. So, what is this natural bilinear map? So, this is given by, so this is simply a, like writing one tensor next to each other. So, this is the juxtaposition product. So, you take v 1, okay, let us call it w 1 tensor etcetera w k and then we take some u 1 tensor etcetera u k dash. So, it is enough to define it on the simple pro, simple tensors, tensor products and then one can uh, linearly extend it to the space. Okay. So, then this is mapped to w 1 tensor etcetera w k tensor u 1 tensor etcetera u k dash. So, there is this uh, bilinear map okay this is indeed a c bilinear map so that is defined between these spaces now this bilinear map actually can be linearly extended to t of v so that is what gives us a product on t of v so we can extend this map extend this map linearly, of course, linearly in each variable uh, to all of t of v. So, in particularly, we get a map from t of v to 
t of v cross t of v to t of v. So, this is the product that is defined on t of v. So, t of v becomes uh, C algebra indeed associative algebra with respect to this product. So, this way we can make t of v as C associative algebra. Okay. So, which is called tensor algebra. So, this is not just uh, merely a vector space, it is it has this product structure and that product structure makes it uh, uh, it is a C algebra and it and that algebra is called the tensor algebra associated this V. So, now uh, we can easily see that uh, the product that we have defined is naturally a graded product. So, that makes actually this T of V indeed graded algebra. So, this is indeed graded C algebra. So, what is the meaning of that? That means, if I take some element from T k of V and then if I take uh, some other element from T k of T k dash of V, if we take the product of that, then that should lie inside T k plus k dash of V. So, that is how we have defined the product. So, that means, it is graded algebra. So, note that T of V which is the tensor algebra okay by definition it is the direct sum of all of uh, t k of v okay this is the direct sum of t k of v where k ranging from 0 to infinity so yeah this should be should have been defined in the beginning itself but anyway okay so we have this uh, T of V which is the direct sum of T k of V on which uh, we have defined this uh, multiplication and it is naturally a vector space. So, that makes this as a C associative algebra. So, now uh, let us actually have a closer look at this algebra. Okay. So, one can define something called free associative algebra generated by the variables v1, etc., vn. Okay. So, let us call this as C angle bracket v1, etc., vn. So, what is this? This is free associative C algebra generated by the variables v1, etc., vn. Okay. So, so there is this universal construction one can do this. Okay. So, if you do not know the definition maybe you should uh, go back and then uh, just uh, check the definition of this. So, then it is easy to prove that T of V as an, as an C algebra is naturally isomorphic to this uh, free associative algebra okay, as a C algebra. Indeed, uh, this actually gives us uh, uh, how to how one can think about the elements of T of V in terms of the monomials in V1, etc., Vn. So, if you think about it, basically the simple tensor V i1 tensor, etc., V i k. So, this corresponds to the monomial V i1, etc., V i k. Note that uh, it is a free associative algebra, there are no relations between the variables V i, that means the variables v i do not commute. Okay. So, the monomial this order product matters, matters us. Okay. So, this is indeed ordered product. So, in which we write the order matters. So, so the variables v i is do not commute. Okay. And then you can take all possible monomials that can be formed from this uh, variables v1, etc., vn and then take C span of that. So, that is going to be your uh, free associative algebra. So, where the product is given by just writing one monomial next to another monomial. So, that is the product uh, that is. Uh, so, that gives you uh, C algebra structure here and then with that algebra structure you can see that T of V is isomorphic to this uh, free associative algebra generated by v1, etc., vn. So, these are all some general facts. Okay. So, one must know already. Okay. So, now uh, 
uh, if we start with the G model then what happens ok, then it is easy to see that T of V becomes naturally a G sub G, G module again. So, if V is a, is a G module then, then it is easy to see that we can define G module structure on the K tensor ok is also a G module. So, how the uh, a G action is defined on the kth tensor it is again by derivation. So, if I take x and then if we take some k tensor again it is enough to define it on the simple tensors and then you can just generalize then you can extend linearly to all the elements of this t k of v because it is spanned by the simple tensors. So, if you take uh, some simple tensor w 1 tensor etcetera w k x acting on that by der derivation what does it mean? So, it means x first act on the first coordinate and then you have all the remaining co coordinate as it is then it, it acts on the second coordinate then all other coordinates stay as it is and so on then finally, it acts on the last coordinate. Okay. So, this is just uh, by acting by derivation, derivation rule. So, that makes T k of V as a G module. So, that means T V because the direct sum of T k of V. So, this is also a G module, also a G. Okay. So, we have many many interesting uh, representations coming from this T of V. Okay. So, what is about uh, uh, other constructions? So, let us now look at uh, what is called uh, symmetric uh, algebra and symmetric tensors. Okay. So, let us look at symmetric algebra which is easy to define from algebra point of view and then we can relate that with uh, symmetric tensors. So, once we understand this uh, very clearly then it will be easier to understand the exterior algebra and the exterior tensors or alternating tensors. So, what is symmetric algebra? So, symmetric algebra it can be defined easily uh, from the tensor algebra. Okay. So, you can you can take uh, uh, this uh, two sided ideal uh, generated by uh, these uh, uh, these elements ok. Let us call call it as the ideal i. So, this is the two sided ideal two sided ideal generated by the elements v tensor w minus w tensor v. So, so where V and W varies over capital V. Okay. So, what we want to say whenever we flip two tensors we want to say that uh, so there is no change. So, V tensor W should be equal to W tensor V. The way we want to actually do that so algebraically just take the two sided ideal generated by that go modulo that. So, then you get the necessary algebra that you are interested in. So, you take T of V modulo I. So, that is what called a symmetric algebra. So, purely from algebra point of view what we are doing. So, tensor algebra gives us this free associative algebra generated by the variables V 1 etcetera V n, where V 1 etcetera V n do not have any relations between them. That means, whenever you consider the monomial V i 1 etcetera V i k the order in which that is written matters for us. But if you take the symmetric algebra, so we want to demand that the variables V i commute. Okay. So, that means we go modulo this two, two sided ideal generated by V tensor W minus W tensor V. Then what we get is indeed C algebra which is associative plus commutative C algebra again generated by the variables V 1 etcetera V n. Okay. So, there is this natural map from T of V to S of V okay, which is actually let us say 
the image of the simple tensor V i 1 etcetera V i k is mapped to just V i 1 times etcetera V i k. So, now the variables V i commutes. So, that means one can actually arrange this in the increasing order or the decreasing order. So, we can simply arrange it as just i 1 etcetera less than or equal to etcetera i k. Okay. So, that is what we can do here in the symmetric algebra. So, we can arrange So, that means, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this ideal that we are going modulo uh, to get the symmetric algebra is indeed a graded ideal because it is generated by degree 2 uh, graded elements. So, these are degree 2 graded elements. So, because of that we get what is called graded ideal, we get a graded ideal. So, because we are going modulo graded ideal, the algebra that we get again it becomes graded algebra. So, this is again graded algebra. So, what will be the graded component? So, you take the grading on T of V, just surject on S of V, then whatever you get there will be the grading for the S of V. So, that means all we do, we can take uh, this uh, S k of V. So, which is just a suggestion, let us call this map quotient map pi, then you take pi of t k of v. So, that is your s k of v. Okay. So, by definition it is indeed uh, the kth uh, symmetrized uh, tensors. So, we will actually naturally identify this s k of v as a subspace of T k of V, okay, but uh, so that is just uh, as a uh, vector space one can identify. So, okay, let us actually look at uh, what can be the basis of this S k of V. So, you can easily see that uh, we have this natural basis for T k of V, so which is given by all the uh, all the words V i 1 etcetera V i k where I 1 etcetera I k just varies from 1 to n. So, which has length k. Okay. So, then if we take that uh, uh, basis and then take the image of that, that is going to be basis uh, sorry that is going to be a spanning set inside your S k of V. Okay. So, definitely it is spanned by V i 1 etcetera V i k. Okay, we can take all i 1 etcetera i k coming from 1 to n. But the thing is since the variables actually commute inside S of v, so we can arrange them in the increasing order. So, that is actually allowed. So, that means we can just simply arrange them. So, then one can prove that this natural set will be form a basis. So, this will be a basis for S k of v. Okay. So, because of this universal constructions, one can just take the natural set that it uh, descends to, then that will be actually basis for this S k of v. So, now it is not very hard to actually uh, compute the dimension using this observation. So, the dimension of S k of v, if you think about it, you are indeed forming a monomial of degree k with the variables uh, n variables v1 etcetera v k. So, this means this is exactly the number of monomials that we form, okay, monomials of degree k that formed from, from the variables v1 etcetera v n. So, of course, when we say monomials, it is a commuting monomials. Okay. So, that means uh, this is exactly if you think about it is the, the coefficient of this uh, mo yeah, multi monomial, multinomial coefficient. So, this is exactly n plus k minus 1 choose k. Okay. So, I will leave it to you to check this that this form a basis and the dimension of this is exactly n plus k minus 1 choose k. Indeed, uh, uh, so 
we have this natural uh, multiplication on S of V coming from T of V because we have gone modulo the two sided ideal generated by uh, this these elements. Okay. So, that means there is a natural C algebra structure on S of E because we have gone modulo the graded ideal. So, we are going to get a graded algebra. So, if you think about it S of V is indeed direct sum of this S k of V where k range from 0 to infinity. So, this is going to be naturally isomorphic to the polynomial algebra generated by V 1 etcetera V n. Okay. So, that is because these variables V 1 etcetera V n commutes and this is the free, okay, this is a free associative plus commutative C algebra generated by V 1 etcetera V n. So, that means it has to be isomorphic to this S of E. So, uh, this is just from the algebra point of view. Uh, now, what is about the module theory connection? Okay. As representations, uh, we have some relationship between uh, uh, symmetric tensors and this S k of V. So, let us try to actually understand that. So, if we start with V being uh, G module, suppose V is a G module. So, then that implies this T of V is a G module. Now, if you think about it, uh, it is easy to see that the ideal i that we have taken that is a g invariant ideal. So, i is a g invariant ideal. So, that implies that when you go modulo that ideal again you get a g module. So, which is S of e, okay. So, for example, how one can actually verify that it is a G invariant because this is two sided ideal generated by uh, uh, these elements. Okay. This is two sided ideal generated by V tensor W minus W tensor V where V and W coming from capital V. So, it is enough to actually say that uh, when you act via element of uh, X in G, uh, then these generators actually somewhat uh, leaves invariant. Okay. So, let us look at uh, what happens. So, let us act by x on this generator x v tensor w minus w tensor v. Then what we get exactly? We get x v tensor w plus v tensor x w minus x w tensor v minus w tensor x v. So, if you think about it, we can actually group these two elements x v tensor w and minus uh, w tensor x v and then we can group these two elements. So, that gives us that x v tensor w minus w tensor x v. So, which is in the generating set plus v tensor x w minus x w tensor v which is also in the generating set. So, that means this is again in the ideal capital I. So, that means I is G invariant. So, once you know that I is G invariant, once you go modulo that uh, ideal, then again you will get a G module structure on this uh, quotient. Okay. So, that makes this S of V as a G model. And it is not uh, difficult to prove that if you take uh, some length k element, which is uh, V i 1 etcetera V i k from S k of V, then and for any x in G, it is easy to prove that x acting on this V i 1 etcetera V i k is again element of S k of V because the natural action is just the derivation action. Then you can see that x dot V i 1 etcetera V i k is going to be just summation V i 1 etcetera x some V i r times etcetera V i k where r is running from 1 to k. So, which is again of the form uh, k, k product. Okay. So, this is has to be inside S k of V. So, that means each graded component is again S k V module. Okay. Yes, sorry, each component uh, S k V is again a G module. It is a sub module. Okay. 
So, now uh, let us actually look at uh, the relation between this S k of v and the simple uh, and the symmetric tensors. So, what are the symmetric tensors? So, basically the symmetric tensors, okay. so by definition, uh, so they are uh, in they are the uh, tensors, simple tensors, okay, spanned by the simple tensors that are actually invariant under the action of the symmetric group S k. So, let us actually uh, make it very precise. Okay. So, let us take this k tensors. Uh, T k of v which is just uh, tensor product of k copies of uh, v. So, now the symmetric group S k acts on T k of v. Okay. So, by permuting just the, uh, the tensor components. So, if you take sigma and then if I take uh, some v i 1 etcetera v i k. So, then simply you apply uh, sigma on the indices. Okay. So, maybe we will use uh, w 1 etcetera w k because we want to just permute the indices. So, then it is it, the sigma it is just going to just permute those corresponding tensor components. So, then it gives exactly w sigma 1 etcetera w sigma of k. So, this is again element in T k of V and this induces actually action on T k of V. So, now once you have the action of the group uh, then we can talk about uh, fixed point elements. Okay. If I take this symmetric k of V by definition this is those vectors inside T k of V such that they are invariant under the action of this uh, S k. That means, when you apply sigma that the w becomes invariant. So, sigma w becomes w for all sigma in S k. Okay. So, this is uh, indeed the set that we are interested in. So, that is the symmetric uh, tensor actually. So, this is called symmetric uh, k tensors. So, now one can easily verify that uh, the action of g indeed commutes with the action of S k. Okay. Suppose uh, V is a G module. So, then the action of G commutes with uh, the action of S k. So, in particularly on okay, T k of V, in particularly that implies that the sim symmetric power becomes a G module. Okay. So, we have again module structure on this sim k of V. So, we have a natural map from T V to S V and then if you restrict this map to actually this sim k of V. So, we restrict this map let us call it pi. So, pi you are restricting to sim k of V. So, this is going to map sim k of V to exactly the S k of V. Okay. So, this is a natural map that we have. What one can prove that one can prove that this is indeed vector space isomorphism and if we actually take uh, V being a G module then this is indeed G module isomorphism. So, all important thing is it is an isomorphism of vector spaces. Okay. This is an isomorphism. Okay. So, indeed uh, the inverse map is actually very well known map which is called symmetrization. So, what is uh, symmetrization? So, the symmetrization is if I take element inside this S k of V, let us call it uh, some V y 1 etcetera V i k. So, it is written in some order okay, because the order does not matter. Then what we can do? We can actually associate this natural element. 1 divided by k factorial sigma inside S k where you can apply sigma on all these elements. So, you can just simply take V sigma 1 okay, maybe we can just do it on the any any k tensors W 1 etcetera W k. If I take then we just simply apply it on W sigma 1 
tensor etcetera tensor w sigma k ok. So, this is uh, indeed a map from S k of v to sim k of v. So, that is actually easy to see ok. So, you have a uh, natural map which is the inverse map of uh, this uh, restriction map ok. So, I will leave it actually to you to check uh, this is indeed uh, gives you isomorphism ok. So, in particularly you can see that uh, there is a natural basis that is actually coming from the basis of S k of e. So, which looks like the you can take the basis here in the S k of v, use this symmetrization map and whatever images that you are getting in the symmetric tensor that will be a basis for the sim k of e. So, this way uh, one can actually get uh, many, many interesting uh, representations ok. Sometimes it is easy to actually think uh, the elements of sim k of v as just words ok. So, the words that just commutes in the in the variables that actually comes from the basis of capital V ok or otherwise one can also think them as elements inside the uh, tensor product and then you can actually just uh, symmetrize it and then you can actually take elements from the sim k of V. So, both has some advantages ok. So, that so the important thing is uh, all this uh, sim k of V they are G representations for any given G model. Okay. So, I will uh, stop here and then uh, we will continue with the construction of uh, alternating uh, products in the next class. Thank you.